He looks over at my cameraman, he looks over at Kobe, and he looks over at me, and he said, hell, it'd probably do 80 mile an hour with all you fat in it. You know, dealing in collector cars, you meet all types of people, and that's what I love about it, whether it be a porn star or an old man or a dirty old man that is probably dirtier than any porn star you ever met. We were in Daytona Beach for the Turkey Rod Run just a few months back, and you know, I'm always out looking for cars. I love buying cars. I love buying cars from interesting people. You know, we're walking around, and you know, I'm a classic muscle guy, C10 trucks, Corvettes, things of that nature. So those are usually what are, what I'm scanning for. And, and, and when, I'm, when I'm at a car show, I'm walking and I'm just scanning the parking lot. I'm not even looking for, for sale signs, I'm looking for what catches my eye. And you know, I have certain cars that clients are looking for, and then I have just certain cars I like, and I'm just scanning. And my buddy Kobe and the camera guy were walking around Daytona Motor Speedway on Thanksgiving. It was actually Thanksgiving day. We're walking around, and I mean, the weather's gorgeous in Daytona, you know, and we're walking around, sun's shining, we're looking at cars, and everything there's for sale, and everything's there's overpriced. And, you know, every, you got to leave a little meat on the bone when you're buying and selling, obviously, and, and you know, and I mean, you can negotiate a lot of that in there, but, you know, you kind of want to start at a good number, too, and some of these things have just got that eye in the sky price on them. And um, we're walking around, and I'm looking at patina rods, and I'm looking at, just everything. I looked at a little GTS Viper, you know, and of course you bump in, bump into your YouTube fans and they want to see you and take pictures and, and all that. And I'm over here trying to get to this car, you know, and look at it. Um, looked at a low rider Monte Carlo while I was there, just random things, you know, and we're walking around. So we decided to take a break from looking at cars to so keep in mind there's 5,000 cars here. We took a break from looking at cars. We're going to go through some of the swap beat and walk around. Well, of course, you know, we have the new warehouse now and we're doing all this work. So we're looking for things to decorate the warehouse and stuff. And there was a guy there selling like fiberglass front ends, like wall hangers. And there was a 60, 65 Shelby Cobra front end on the wall. And it was just, it was cool. You know, it looked nice and had all the chrome on it. And, you know, it was done in the blue with the white stripes. And that's kind of neat, you know. So I stopped to look at it. And, of course, my buddy Kobe and the camera guy were still walking around. And Kobe goes, that is the cutest little Corvair i ever seen. And cute and Corvairs just aren't really my thing. But I looked over and lo and behold, the slickest little black 1963 Corvair Monza convertible you ever laid eyes on. Had a set of Anson slotted mags on it. Just a cute little car and walked around it just clean as a pin. And just so happens the guy that was selling the fiberglass front ends, this was his car. I looked and there was a for sale sign laying in the seat. We walk around a little Corvair, and I said, it's a cute little car. You mind if I open the door? He said, don't mind a bit. Open the door. You know, I look inside it, and, you know, the car looks nice, four-speed. Hmm, black on black, black top, you know, good colors. I mean, you know, it's beautiful outside. We drove the truck and trailer down. You know, we're at the beach. We need a drop top, you know, pretty weather at the beach. So the owner walks up, you know. He was talking to somebody about his little front ends, his little setup over there. And he's an older gentleman. Um, the best way to describe him, he's like everybody's grandpa, but you add a flat bill Puma hat. He had on one of those uh, moisture wicking golf shirts, and he had on like the short khaki shorts that all the kids are wearing now. And you know, and he had on his to perfection clean white Puma tennis shoes on. And he had about four gold chains. And of course he had his medic alert bracelet on. And this guy's about 75 years old. And he was a very vulgar old man, I guess is the best way to describe him. You know, he was telling me about his little Corvair and how he owned it for 18 years and all the dates that he went on in this car and all the dates he went on in this car. It may not appeal to the JCPenney girls, but the most Sears and Roebuck gals, they liked it. And he's telling me about that. And he lives in a retirement community called The Villages. And the Villages is a huge retirement community outside of Ocala, Florida, that is like literally, it's, it's its entire, it's its own town now. They have movie theaters and their own grocery stores and Walmarts and mini malls and everything. And when he first moved into this retirement community, you could actually drive around in it. Well, now it's going to be like mainly a golf cart only thing. So he can't rock his Corvair on hot dates in the retirement community anymore. And he said he just sits in the garage and he said he decided he's going to sell it and he wants to get him a new golf cart. So we're walking around and we look at the car and 
you know, and he starts going back and forth on price and asked him what he wanted for it. And it was a fair price for the little car. I don't buy and sell a lot of Corvairs, but cheap black drop top, can't go wrong. You know, I says, it run and drive out good? He said, it runs and drives out perfect. And I said, good enough for me. He fires it up, car sounds good. You know, motor's in the back, trunk's in the front, whatever, gotcha. So we walk around and he goes, what do you think? I said, I don't think I'd be interested in a Corvair. I said, you know, I'm a muscle car guy. And I start telling a few of the cars I have, big block Camaros, big block Corvettes, big block C10s. He said, listen, son. I said, you see that little Corvair right there? He said, when your next door neighbor has an easy go, that is a big block Corvette. And I, I got chuckled with him, you know, and I said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I made him an offer. And, and, and you know, I didn't, I didn't cut his throat. I didn't aim low, but I made a fair offer on it. And I said, I'll pay you $100 bills for it, but you're going to throw in that Cobra front end with it. He goes, I reckon I'll take it. So we got this car that we know nothing about. And I almost sold it before I even sat in it. So we're trying to get everything together. You know, Matt, the camera guy, is my, is my money mule. He's got, he's got my money bag in with his camera equipment. And here we are trying to count out money to this old man and get the title to this. And he's getting this front end off the display. And everything's moving real quick. And keep in mind, we have thousands of people walking around us while we're doing all this. And these guys all come up with matching shirts on. And I'm over here walking around this car for the second time that I just bought. And, and they're walking around and they're looking under it. And, 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 they're, and they're doing all this stuff. And I look at their shirts and embroidered on them was the Corvair Club of Central Florida. And these guys, I mean, they were, I don't know what type of Corvair enthusiasts they were, but they definitely looked the part. Like these guys had Corvair hats and the little pins on their hats. And like they had like little like merit badges on their shirts. I mean, there were these guys, you know? And they took, and they were all, and they all had matching shirts on, like they were dressed alike. I took the price that I paid for the Corvair and I added $2,500 to it. And I said, would you guys give that for this car? He said, oh yeah, in a heartbeat. This is a rock solid little Monza convertible. He said, do you want to sell it? I said, nope, it's not for sale. And I, that made me feel a little better about my purchase. I know nothing about Corvairs. I value their opinions. You see their shirts, they're experts. So we get the little Corvair. Keep in mind, we know nothing about this car than other than it's a hit with old ladies. So we all pile up in the car. You know, and the first thing I asked him, I said, hey, is the gas gauge working? He said, the gas gauge works fine. I said, how's it do on the highway? He looks over at my cameraman. He looks over at Kobe. And he looks over at me. And he said, hell, it'd probably do 80 mile an hour with all you fat asses in it. And I'm like, thanks. So we drop the top on it and we drive out. Well, keep in mind, I bought tons of parts while I was there too. So we weren't gonna worry about that. I was gonna come back and get those later. We drive the car out of there. We never moved my truck again for the rest of the weekend. We probably put close to 100 miles on this Corvair. We drove it on the beach. We drove it out to the clubs. We drove it everywhere and we had an absolute blast. It never missed a beat. It was so funny cruising around in this thing. I mean, literally it will do zero to 60 in a damn weekend. But it was so funny. Well, here we are with all these hot rods and race cars and they have a big after party every night across the street from the track. And, and you got all these big blown pro street cars and these mega hot rods and we're riding around and this little Corvair is just putting around and never misses a beat. It runs like a sewing machine. We're sitting in traffic. I mean, you know, you, you might sit in traffic 30 minutes just to turn in the parking lot at this big after party they have. And these cars are running hot and they're having to shut them off at the red lights and stuff. And I'm like, we're just over here just, oh cool, the radio works, you know? And we're just riding around this thing. And, and I mean, we had a blast in that car. Like literally, the amount I paid for the car, we had more fun with it. If I never made a dollar off of it, it was worth it. We had a blast riding around it. Got some great footage filming with it. And uh, like I said, we got to drive down Daytona Beach with it. And I mean, it was just a great car and it got tons of attention. I mean, it really, I mean, it's just a clean little Corvair that you don't see them like that. And the little mags, it kind of gave it a little attitude for a Corvair would have. I actually stuck the car on the trailer and on the way back, I posted a picture of it on Instagram. And my banker calls me up out of the blue and he goes, I love that little Corvair. Is it a nice car? I said, man, I only buy nice cars. It's great. He goes, I want to see it. So we come back to the warehouse and we, we drop the Corvair off. The car sat overnight on the trailer, bumped the switch, fired right up, backed it off the trailer. My banker saw it, fell madly in love with it. And now it's sitting in his driveway. And you know, the Corvair and the banker is a single guy. So maybe, maybe a little magic in that Corvair still left. Maybe he might find Miss Wright 
or at least miss right now anyway. Shrewd negotiation starts with finding the right car, and the best way to do that is with Autotempest.com. Autotempest allows you to search nationally through all the major listing sites with one search. Autotempest, all the cars, one search.